Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to talk about Alexis Hall. So for a long time I've been mentioning that Alexis Hall is one of my favourite authors and people often come to me saying where should I start with his books and he has quite a lot of books out. He's got some traditionally published ones but also some indie published ones and there are different places where you can start depending on what sort of things you enjoy reading in your romance books. Full disclosure here, I'm not going to be mentioning all of his books, I'm just going to be mentioning the ones that I think are good ones to start with. He also has been releasing a lot of books lately so I haven't been all caught up with his latest titles but nonetheless let me recommend where I think you should start. So the first book I want to talk about is actually the one that I recommend literally everyone start with, almost everyone, and that is Glitterland by Alexis Hall. I guess I don't need to say by Alexis Hall because they all will be by him. So Glitterland is the one that I recommend most people start with. It is being republished with this gorgeous cover that you can see here. And this is the one that I recommend the most people start with because it's got some of the spice that he, Alexis Hall likes to have in his books but not too much in an overwhelming degree. And also the main characters are lovely and it introduces you to a series where you can jump around and it's all interconnected by the characters in the books, but very, very loosely so. So in Glitterland, we have the sunshine grumpy trope. We have a grumpy author who is struggling with depression and he is also bipolar and he's just struggling with writing and not feeling like he has any connections to anyone. And then Darian blazes into his life and he is a model and he has such an Essex accent. He's an absolute ball of sunshine. They have a one night stand, but the author can't get enough and maybe more is going to happen there. And what's wonderful about this one is that it talks all about class because Darian is an Essex boy and he talks in a certain way and he acts in a certain way and then we've got the author who thinks of himself highly and is very a posh British person. So this one is, as most of Alexis Hall's romance books are, unashamedly British and it's got all the Britishisms in it. It's got a lot of the fun references that Alexis Hall throws into his books. He likes to do this thing where he will reference classics at one point, such as like Shakespeare and, and Samuel Beckett. And then the next thing you know, he'll be referencing like The Little Mermaid and Star Wars. So I just find it fascinating. It's got Alexis Hall's lyrical, beautiful, gorgeous writing style in it, which is the kind of writing that can win literary awards, but is also targeted and distilled into a romance. And I love that about his books in particular. And so it's got a bit of everything that I love about Alexis Hall. Fascinating side characters, but still primarily focus on the romance. This is the place to start. Oh, and it's got some steam, and it's very nice steam, and it's very well written. But if you're not into steamy books and you want to start with something where there are no steam levels at all, you just want to be a romance, the next place that I recommend you start is with Waiting for the Flood by Alexis Hall. And why I recommend you start with this one is that it's based in the same universe as Glitterland is, so it's related. It's also a novella, so it's very, very short. You can just dip your toes in, see if you like his writing style and characters, and get to know him. And it's all fade to black. There are no scenes in it for you to read at all, if that's not your cup of tea. Again, Waiting for the Flood is quite nice because it's a tamer version of the Sunshine Grumpy kind of storyline. We've got our main character who's very grumpy. He's just, he's not just, he's out of a 10 year relationship where he really thought he'd met the one. He's in this big house that he didn't plan to live in alone. And there's going to be flooding in this area because if you're in the UK in certain areas, they're used to having floods. Maybe not so much anymore with the way climate change is going. But yes, UK used to be known for having flooding. So then the flood people come in, the people who help people prepare their houses for flooding to protect as much of their house as possible. And in that gang, you meet this lovely little ginger haired cowboy guy who's a bit sunshiny, but not too much. And he brings out the best in this grumpy character. There's a lovely old woman neighbor who is a secondary character you get to see. And it's just a very sweet romance and a quick one to dip your toes into his writing style with. Same series. Can you tell that the Spy series is my favourite? Now, if you're a reader who wants all of the spice and wants it right there in the beginning, in your face, I've got the book for you. The place that you should start with Alexis Hall is For Real. And For Real is a BDSM age gap romance and it's actually probably my favourite Alexis Hall book. 
and it's fascinating. It's wonderful. It's really, really good. I didn't think I would get behind an age gap romance the way I got behind this one, but there's always a book. There's always a book. So in this one, we're following this dropout from university who has a very famous mother and is kind of in her shadow. And he just wants people to respect him, especially when it comes to his sexual preference, which is BDSM. He's young, but he is a dom and nobody accepts this about them about him. They all think it's ridiculous that this skinny little British boy wants to be a dom. And then he meets our main character, our love interest, who decides to give him a go even though he's way older than him, and be his sub for one night only. But of course, after that first night, neither of them can get enough, and it's about the ways in which they fit physically, but have to kind of figure out how they're going to make a relationship emotionally. And let me tell you, neither of them are very good at it, so it definitely takes quite a few tries and quite a lot of work. It's kind of got, you know what, Alexis Hall really likes his grumpy sunshine trope because it's kind of got the grumpy sunshine element again and it's also got his wonderful writing style and it's also unashamedly British. In this one we have a very fascinating friends group but they're really not the focus. It's really about them two as characters and them two getting along. So if you just really want a romance and you don't really care about secondary storylines, this is the one for you. It's also quite long and when I say long, it's not that long, but it's longer than both Glitterland and Waiting for the Flood, but it can be a very good place to dive in. I don't think you should start with pansies, but if you've read either Waiting for the Flood, Glitterland, For Real, or all of them, and you want to read the last book in the Spy series, pansies is where you should go next, but it's not the best place to start with Alexis Hall. We're gonna take it back a step. If you're once again one of those people who don't really want any spice in your books and you're used to traditionally published romance and you kind of want something along the lines of that, then I have got the Alexis Hall book for you. And it's probably the one that you've seen around the most and that is Boyfriend Material and the sequel to that is Husband Material. And what sets this one apart from other Alexis Hall books is that it's definitely more of a rom-com where the other ones feel a bit more straight up romance. So in this series, you're gonna get humor. It's gonna bring you humor unlike the other two books, which I do find quite funny, but this one has a lot more funny moments to it. It's got a lot more secondary characters. So if you want some storylines that have to do with family, that have to do with friends who can't understand jokes, then this is another place for you to start. As you can see from the covers, it's still unashamedly British, but the writing style is a bit more mainstream. It's less of the writing style that makes Alexis Hall unique and one of my favorites. So if you want something that's just a bit more popular, a bit more what you might be familiar with, I recommend Boyfriend Material to start with. I haven't told you what it's about, have I? I haven't. So we're following our main character, Luke, and he needs to find a respectable boyfriend or he might be fired. And so the only person who will take him up on his offer is Oliver Lockwood, who is a lawyer, and he needs to be seen with someone at a family event so that he can feel less alone during it. And so they form up a fake dating relationship to benefit the both of them. And it's quite sweet, it's quite cute, but it is also quite different from his indie stuff. But if you do like rom-com, this is where you should be starting. Another place that you can start with Alexis Hall's books is the billionaire romance series that he has. This is a trilogy. The first one is called How to Bang a Billionaire, and then it goes How to Blow It with a Billionaire, and lastly it goes How to Belong with a Billionaire. And in this series, we're following Aiden, who is a university student. He graduates from university, and while he's trying to wonder what on earth he should be doing next, he meets a billionaire who ends up quite liking him. And yet the billionaire says he does not have time for romance. So they make an agreement, which is all about physicality, enjoyment purposes, and nothing about emotional ones. But maybe, just maybe, they can work their way to an emotional relationship as well. This is for all you readers out there who like a billionaire romance. Just like any other billionaire romance, you've got a really rich, suave, billionaire who's emotionally untouchable and doesn't want anything consistent and might have to work through his emotions and realize that maybe people do like emotions and need emotional things. Whereas our emotional main character, who's the uni student, needs to learn how to respect people's boundaries. This is also BDSM, guys. So again, if you want the spice, if you want the heat, and if you want the writing style that's beautiful and lyrical and wonderful, you're gonna find it here. 
It's less coated in Britishism and British culture than the other ones, but it's still got quite a few of those in there. So if you're worried about not being able to understand some of the Britishisms of the other books that I've mentioned, this is where you should be starting. Okay, so those are my favourite books of his and where I really, 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 truly do think you should start. But I do have to give it up for some of the other books which could be more suited for other readers. I know that he has A Lady for a Duke, which has a trans main character. And so if you're looking for an LGBT plus historical romance book that's set in the past, you might want to start with A Lady for a Duke. And if you're behind the trend of the baking romances that are very, very popular, you might also want to start with Rosie Palmer Takes the Cake, where we have a bisexual main character and it's got lots of baking involved. And I do have to say, you can tell that Alexis Hall likes his baking because that does come up in For Real. So as I've mentioned, For Real is the most intense in terms of spice level. But if you did like that and you also like baking, you might get a kick out of reading that one too. But Alexis Hall doesn't only write romance, he also has a historical fiction mystery series called Iron and Velvet, which I haven't read, and he has a Sherlock Holmes retelling called The Mysterious Letter of the Affair, which I did not like, but maybe if you like Sherlock Holmes retellings, you could enjoy that one more than I did, and it's worth a shot. But yes, I just wanted to make a quick little video of where you can start and where you can dive in with Alexis Hall books if that is something you're looking to do. I always support more read more people reading his books because I just enjoy them so very much and I had so much to say and I'm kind of glad that I could distill it into a little video for other people to try. Please let me know in the comment section down below, do you have a favourite author? Or if you can't choose a favourite author like me, do you have a favourite author in a particular genre? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video, and you know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior! Because, of course, um... Oops.